Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course where you will learn how to perform an analysis in STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this video, we are going to be focusing on using the post processor to obtain all of your relevant analysis and design results. We will now turn our attention over to our sample model that we'll be using in this exercise. If we were to take a look at the input file for this model, we're going to notice that it does contain an analysis command after all of the load cases have been defined. And this model also does contain a code check or a design command. At this point, we're at the stage in our workflow where we're ready to perform our analysis and review our results. To do this, we're going to go to our Analysis and Design tab in our ribbon toolbar and click on our Run Analysis icon. After the analysis is performed, we're going to check to make sure that we don't have any errors or warnings. If these items were noted, they would be available for view in the output file. Now for this model, we're going to go ahead and proceed directly to the post processor and we'll go ahead and walk you through all the different results that you can obtain. So I'm going to go ahead and select go to the post processing mode directly in the stat analysis and design dialog and then I'll click on the done button. Now it's also important to note that if I was not in that current dialog, I could also get to the post processor by selecting the post processing workflow. Now once we enter the post processor, the results setup dialog is going to appear on your screen. If you would like to limit the results that you're viewing to a particular number of load cases or load combinations, you can go ahead and enter those in the selected window and then move everything else over to the available window. For this exercise, I'll go ahead and leave the results available for all of the load cases and load combinations that are in this model. In addition to that, you're going to find your results view options tab available in this dialog. Now for me, I like to enable my automatic scaling for all of my different options. Basically what this means is that STAD Pro will reorient or automatically adjust your scales as you're viewing different types of results to make the viewing a little bit easier. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. Now the graphical user interface for the post processor is very similar to the main analytical modeling workflow area. You're going to notice that we have different options available in our workflow page control area at the top of the screen. And we also have different options available in the ribbon toolbar. Now the first area we're going to review is the displacements page in the workflow page control area. Now you're going to notice that when you select different pages within the page control area, different tables will be displayed in the data area on your screen. The tables that we have available for ourselves right now are the node displacements table, which will be used to view numerical values of nodal displacements, and also our beam relative displacement detail table, which will be used to view the numerical values for sectional displacements along with the length of each member. Along with being able to see all of this tabular information over in the right hand side of the screen, we're also able to see a deflected shape of the structure. Now anytime we see any type of structure diagram, it's typically according to the currently selected load case. Here I can see that load case number one is selected and we're showing our displacements. If I would like to select a different load case, I can use the loads pull down menu and then select any load case that I choose. If I had load combinations, I could also select my load combinations through that area. And we also have an all area if you just want quick access to whatever you have analyzed. Let's go ahead and go to the next section. So we're now we're going to click on our reactions area. Now this reactions page, which I selected through the workflow page control area, will display the support reactions along with tabular results. The tabular results we have available are our support reactions table, which is used to display the values of support reactions in tabular format. 
In addition to that, we also have our statics check results, which will provide a tabular representation of the equilibrium check of the structure for each load case. Now you're going to notice that for most of these tables within the data area, we also provide some additional tabs. Here I'm showing all of the information, for example, in the support reactions table. I can also get a summary of information and also an envelope solution. On my screen, I can see the support reactions are currently indicated. And again, I can see from the bottom right hand corner that these again are showing me the reactions according to the currently selected load case. We are next going to be moving on to the results for our beam member forces. Now, as you're reviewing these results, and it's important to notice that the results for the member end forces are reported with respect to the member's local coordinate system following the sign convention that you see on your screen. And this can also be obtained through the help information available for STAD Pro. To start reviewing your beam results, you're going to go to your workflow page control area and select your beam results option. Now, when you select this option, by default, your beam and forces table and your beam force details tables are going to be available in the data, ta data area. The beam and force table will be used to display the numerical values of the member and forces, while the beam force detail table will be used to display the cross-sectional forces and moments at sections along the length of each member. Now again, we have different tabs to give you different pieces of information available in each table. And it is important to note that these tables can be copied and pasted into a spreadsheet program such as Microsoft Excel. Now what we're seeing on our screen is we're seeing the bending diagrams bending about the local Z axis for each member according to load case number one. Now, if you would like to see alternate diagrams, you may select different diagrams available from this icons in the results tab in the ribbon toolbar. So say, for example, I wanted to see my FZ, I could do that. I could see my FY, I could see my moment about my local Y and so forth. Now let's go ahead and move on to see some additional pieces of information. In addition to our beam and forces, if I selected the layouts tab, this is the first layouts option available in the results tab of the ribbon. I see that I have some additional beam result information. So let's go ahead and go to the next section, which is a beam stress layout. Now what we're going to see on our screen is we're going to see the beam stress diagram which will show the member stresses according to the currently selected load case. I can see the currently selected load case here. Now, anytime I see red, basically what that indicates is that indicates that it is in compressive stresses. If I see blue, that basically indicates tensile stresses. Now, if I wanna get more information on any particular member, I'm gonna go ahead and select it in the main window. And what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to isolate that particular member my color coding still works. Uh, red is compression, blue is tension. And I can see anywhere along the length of the member. Now right now you can see by this little slider bar, I'm at the top end, basically the starting end of the member. And what I'm gonna do is I can slide that down and you can see that my corner stresses are going to be updated. In addition to that, in the bottom right hand corner, I also have my beam combined axial and bending stress table, which will indicate the stresses for all the members in the model um, for each load case. So I have the all tab, the max stresses, and then also some profile stress points. Let's go ahead and move on. And we're gonna go back to our layouts icon and this time we're going to select utilization. Now the utilization option will only be available if you've actually performed a steel design. So you need to either have a code check command or a select command in your input file for designing the steel system. If you have performed a steel design, you're going to get this type of information. Now on our screen, we can see all of the members have been color coded. Anything in green means that it has completely passed all code checks and has an interaction ratio less than 1.0. Anything in blue means that that member is failing. 
anything in red means it's an extreme failure. An extreme failure would be classified as a member with an interaction ratio greater than 1.5. In addition to that, we also have our design results table available at the right-hand side of the screen. What we're going to see first is through the All tab, we can see the calculated demand um, to capacity ratio along with the allowable stress ratio for each member. And if I wanted to identify if I had any failing members, I could select the failing members tab, which will basically filter the results on just those members that did pass the code check. Those will be all the members indicated in blue or red. Let's go ahead and move on to the next section with our beam results, which is our graphs section. Now the graphs will be displayed according to whichever member is currently selected on your screen. The beam graphs at the right of the screen will by default show your moment about your strong axis, your beam shear stress, and the axial load in the member. Now you could change any of these graphs just by right clicking on that particular graph, selecting diagrams, and then you can display a different piece of information if you needed to. Now that we've reviewed all of the beam stress information that we're going to need, let's go ahead and move on to our plate results. So I'm going to go ahead and select the plate results option. Now upon doing this, the, di the diagrams dialog is going to appear on my screen. And in order to start seeing some plate stresses, I need to select which stress type I would like to see. Now we do have a complete description of each of these stress types available through the help file. Um, for this particular model, let's go ahead and say the maximum absolute stress and we can select a particular load case. Now after we exit out of this dialog, we'll also be able to select alternative load cases through the loads pull down menu. So let's just go ahead and stick on dead load. So here on our screen, we can see the contour plot has been created, showing your maximum absolute stress. We also do have a legend over at the left hand side of your screen to make viewing of the results pretty easy. In addition to that, we do have a couple of tables available over in the data area. The top table is your plate corner stress table, which will display the shear, membrane, and bending stresses for all specified plates. And we also have a plate center stress table, which will basically display the stresses at the center of each plate element. Now, as a reminder, when we give you the information for the top of the plate versus the bottom of the plate, the top of the plate is always in the direction of the positive local Z axis. So if you're looking at a slab, it might be best to orient the local Z axis pointing up. Let's go ahead and move on to the next type of results for our plates, which are the results along a line option. Now within this area, basically what this will do is it'll allow you to cut a line across your slab or your wall to obtain some additional information if you have a specific area of interest. Say for example, I want to cut a line across this slab. I can come down here, select the cut by a line, and then I could just draw a line anywhere I need to. So here's my line and I'm going to select the direction. Now up in the top portion of the screen is going to basically display um, some detailed information about that line. I can control what I'm seeing up there, right there that's the maximum absolute. Say I want to say the maximum top stress and say I want a little bit more detail. So let's bump that up. We'll go ahead and click update and you can see that it updated that graph for me. In addition to viewing all of your results directly in the post processor using the different tabs within the page control area, you can also do a query on any particular member in the model. Say for example, what I'm looking at right now is I'm using my beams cursor and I can select any member in the model just by double clicking on it. When I double click on that member, as an analysis and a designer current for this particular model, I'm able to get some additional information on this particular member. Like say, for example, I wanted to review the shear bending on this member. I can get my deflection results 
and I can also obtain some steel design information. You can use the beams cursor to select any member in the model, and you can also use the plates cursor to select any plate in the model to get some more information on that particular element or member. Now the last topic we're going to show you how to do is how to customize your reports. Up in the workflow page control area at the top of the screen, we're now going to select the last tab, which is our reports page. Now within this report setup area, I can select um, a lot of the input data that I've already put in for this model. I could also select a lot of different results options. Now to select different options to show in your report, you could just select it in the available list and they're all in categories. So for this model, I'm going to go ahead and select my output option and say I want to indicate my node displacement summary. And I could just pick the different pieces of information I want to add over here. So say I want that, say I want my failed members table and say a reactions summary. Now, as we pull this down, you're also going to notice that I have some additional information. I could, if I had performed a steel connection design using the RAM connection mode, I could include my RAM connection report here. If I had taken any pictures of my model, um, I could also include some graphics as well. So let's go ahead and just click OK. And here I can see that my report has been generated. I can customize this report by putting the different options in whatever order I like. I can add my own company logo to this report as well. And I can also print it and save it as a uh, Microsoft Word file. This completes our tour through the STAD Pro Connect Edition post processor. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.